Well, hello. Hi. How you guys doing today? I hope you're doing super awesome. I'm doing pretty well myself, but but I have some things I want to talk about and discuss while I apply my makeup today. With the recent launch of Ariana Grande's REM Beauty and Harry Styles' pleasing beauty line, I want to talk about and have an open discussion about the oversaturation of celebrity makeup brands. And oh my goodness, have there been so many. Just in recent years, we have seen the celebrity beauty brand market just explode. Summer hits, I feel like a lot are misses and I wanna talk about that. Is it just like purely a cash grab? Are they just money hungry or are these passion projects? Or are they both and we as consumers are left to decide where we really want to put our money and uh, yeah, sometimes it falls flat. So I'm gonna be doing my makeup today and just chatting and talking with you guys about all of this. If you want to comment along with me, go ahead and feel free to comment along. If you are new to my face and my channel, my name is Ashley Ellix. If you like what you see throughout this video and you wanna see more from me, go ahead and hit that little subscribe button. I am doing a kind of beauty commentary, a little bit behind the scenes nowadays here on YouTube. And then over on my Instagram and TikTok, I'm having a lot of fun just making funny makeup reels. I mean, I think they're funny. I just, I'm having so much fun making them. So check them out if you want to, uh, you know, just get a little sprinkle of something throughout your day. I don't know. Come say hi and let's, let's chill. But I'm ready to discuss. Um, I'm going to be applying my makeup as I'm doing it just, just because I haven't done my makeup yet today. And I'm not going to be talking about each individual product, but I will list them down in the description box in case you are curious about anything that I am using. What the discussion we'll be covering today is going to be more so celebrity like mainstream traditional media so we got like our singers actresses models like those type of people those types of celebrities not influencers not even makeups like celebrity makeup artists I feel like those fall into a different category and could probably have their own videos I want to talk about traditional media those kind of celebrities. And specifically this round, let's just discuss makeup because the beauty category, it's huge. I mean, we've seen like tons of skincare launches recently and even Harry Styles. I mean, his doesn't include makeup right now, so I'm not gonna go too much into it, but it triggered my want and my need to discuss all of this. And who's to say that he won't come out with? makeup products, you know what I mean? So one of the first makeup brands that I could find when I was researching this was actually back in 1994 from Iman, which is a supermodel. She had a line called Iman Cosmetics, but the one that like I really remember when I first was like really thinking hard about this was Jessica Simpson back in 2004. She of course had a reality TV show at one point with her then husband, Nick Lachey, and she was coming out with a beauty brand that had some lip gloss so makeup, but the beauty brand was edible. And I think that their advertising in and of itself was its own down, downfall because they featured the behind the scenes of creating, which was super cool on the show. And she was having to eat so much of like the stuff. I can't remember if she was actually having to eat the like body whip that was supposed to be edible or she just ate too many cupcakes. I don't know if it was like fake, you know what they were doing. minutes to get a stupid elevator. Oh my gosh, man. Marketing fail for sure. So fast forward four years later, we had the huge and revolutionary launch of the Kat Von D beauty brand. Kat Von D, if you aren't familiar with her, was known for her tattoo artistry. She was in a show called Ellie Inc. Did she start in Miami though? I can't remember. I actually watched that show back in the day. So it made a lot of sense for me because she always had really cool makeup. She did like these really intricate looks and like do Oh, it was just so for her to launch a makeup brand it made so much sense right and aesthetically when she partnered up with kendo to do it they just they it looks like really gave her creative freedom and embraced her and her aesthetic they knew it would sell and it did it sold really well it had a lot a lot a lot of favorites among so many people. I mean, beauty YouTubers weren't a thing back in 2008. It was just the mass public really hyped up. And then as soon as, you know, beauty YouTube came to flourishing, it it really like made it elevated even more because people were talking about their cult favorites and their cult classics. And that, you know, that did a very, 
very good thing for beauty, Kat Von D beauty. And like I said, it made so much sense. She was a tattoo artist. She had a lot of artwork. She wore the looks on camera. People wanted to emulate the kind of persona that she was creating. And not only that, but I felt like the product line in and of itself had so many good quality products that the average everyday consumer that maybe didn't resonate with her look, but just wanted a little bit of edge could get, what are they called? The studded kiss lipsticks and just feel like, mm, you know, like a little something, a little some kind of way. And then also still has the shade selection that you would want from both edgy and everyday consumers, which wait, which she really nailed it. It sucks because, you know, she as a person ended up not being so good. She was America's tattooed sweetheart until she wasn't. <laughs> And that's where these celebrity makeup brands really get a little sticky because when they name a beauty line after that particular celebrity, it's like if they do anything wrong, ooh, that's instantly, you're gonna lose sales. So that's not good. So yeah, she ended up not being such a good person. I'm probably gonna do a brand deep dive on them one day because it is, it's it's too much to unpack here. It's a lot. So long story short, just last year in 2020, Kendo bought out Kat Von D. She is no longer a part of the brand. She has no say in anything. She doesn't make a dime anymore. They gave her her money. They cut ties. It is now owned by Kendo. Bye. Get out, get out, get out. It's not called Kat Von D Beauty anymore. It's called KVD Beauty, which they, I feel like they keep changing the name of what that, what that is. Like they went, there's something vegan, kind vegan, something beauty. I don't know. I just, they should have just went with Kendo Vegan, KVD, Kendo, Kendo, I don't know, whatever it may be. So I personally feel like KVD Beauty, back when they launched, like they really showed that, hey, this is, this is something that is profitable, you know? And I'm sure other celebrities took a little bit of note, but it still took a while, actually. Yeah, you know what? I take that back. I don't, we didn't really see much until, I gotta give credit to YouTubers, okay? So first of all, back in 2014, I wanna say, is when beauty YouTubers really started taking off. A lot of us, that's when we kind of started watching, getting really involved in makeup. I mean, me personally, it was back in high school, <laughs> back in early 2000s that I really started getting into it and then went to school for it and stuff. But that's when like mainstream, the average consumer really started getting into it. And Kylie Jenner also was going through her bit of a transformation. And obviously a lot of people were talking about her lips and whatever her and her makeup artists were doing along with injectables, okay? <laughs> Whether they wanted to like say it out loud or not, that's what obviously was going on. They wanted to capitalize off of that popularity, which is genius. I mean, hello, people wanted to look like her. They wanted to have those full lips. Full lips were very on trend. She actually probably had a huge hand in boosting MAC Cosmetics sales because she was using the lip liner. I believe it was Whirl, right? I don't know what lipstick. I just remember Whirl lip liner. And I was working at a beauty store at the time. I was a manager there and all the girls like were obsessed with that. We didn't sell it, but that were like, oh my God, this is the best lip liner ever. You gotta get it. It's just like Kylie's. I remember that. It's like when the talks really Really started happening in my personal life and I was like oh man this is gonna be big not only that but right at that time so OCC which is obsessive compulsive lip tars they really started getting mainstream too they were being sold at Sephora they were like the first in from what I remember like pigmented liquid lip product that wasn't a gloss but a lot of people, you know, it was a little bit of a runny product. We, we liked it, we used it, it's what we had available, but it, it needed a matte counterpart. So matte liquid lipstick products were starting to come on market and perfect, it was just like a perfect storm, I think for Kylie, because everybody wanted her lip look. They were creating this lip look and probably, I don't know if they were, she was getting any cut. I think she was just, letting people know what they used. Who knows what happens behind the scenes. But there was that mixed with everybody wanting this liquid lipstick. It was like the perfect timing for her to launch this brand. So she came out with these liquid lip kits and for a long time, that was the only thing that she had available. Now, the only problem with that is I don't think they really, I don't know if at the time they really knew how big or how explosive it was gonna be because the Kardashians were already a household name. But I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm curious to know how 
big they thought it was gonna, it was, they were gonna take it. Did they have the plan of doing eyeshadow palettes as soon as possible and concealers and all of that? Because a lot of the launches after like the, the makeup brushes were a huge, huge, just disaster because they were so overpriced. Eyeshadow palettes are very hit or miss from what I ever saw. I don't think the concealers did as well as I thought it was going to. It was, it was the Kylie lip kits that really put them on the map and really just made a name for her. I'm not made it. She already, she already was a name, but as far as in the in the cosmetic industry, that's what took off. But I, from what I remember hearing, like the customer service was not very good. There was an issue with like one of the batches having a messed up lip brush. So that wasn't good, but it was, you know, it was, hey, we can get some money real quick with this. Let's do it. And then it ended up turning into this whole cosmetic range. Again, like I said, hit or miss quality. Now there is a couple people talking about right now, I saw a couple news outlets wondering, is this recent event with Travis Scott at Astroworld going to affect Kylie's sales at all? Which I thought was very interesting because she did have a couple like little issues with that, but she's, even though I think she's married to him, it's not, she, did she have any say or any part of that? I don't know. Point is we're back to a celebrity making a mistake. They own this major brand with their name attached to it. Are they now gonna suffer? My opinion is the brand is already suffering. So are we gonna notice any difference? They sold a portion of their business to Cody. I believe it was last year and they had to change their formulas because they were originally making their formulas in the ColourPop's ma manufacturing system, which I believe is either Seed Beauty or Spout, Spout, Sprout. Uh, I don't know. But so they own those formulas. They had to actually change the formulas because they were getting sued, honey. So sue me. No, don't sue me. That's the opposite of- I might be stupid, <laughs> but I didn't know. Rihanna, and I believe it's pronounced Rihanna. I just watched like a whole bunch of clips with her pronouncing her own name and it's Rihanna, but we all say Rihanna, or at least I always have and a lot of people that I've heard, but I think it's Rihanna. I, it is Rihanna. Her last name is actually Fenty. Oh, Miss Riri. Okay, and, and her real name's Robin, actually. Rihanna is her middle name. Robin Rihanna Fenty. Okay, obviously, very obviously, that was a, another groundbreaking makeup launch. Okay, launched in 2017. So this is already during the big makeup boom. So Kylie kind of got on it right when the train was taking off. Fenty Beauty kind of jumped in whilst it was hyped enough, but still available to have some groundbreaking products that really push the envelope, have an expansive shade range that really made other makeup brands go, oh, oh, wait a minute, we should probably do that. You shouldn't have to see sales and another thing to know that we need to be inclusive. That's another video, obviously, but shout out to Rihanna because yeah, hello. <sighs> See, and I just said Rihanna. Oh, that's that's gonna be hard to retrain myself. She came out with highlighters that were just out of this world and that was a big highlighter boom. She came out with some glosses and even though people weren't like really going crazy on glosses yet, she kind of was like, well, you're gonna. <laughs> and the packaging was beautiful, okay? She, I feel like maybe, and maybe it's because they partnered with Kendo as well, who also did Kat Von D Beauty. They saw that the packaging, you know, it had a lot to do with it and they're probably watching YouTubers already and finding out what they have to say. When, when, when brands come out with just lackluster packaging, they aren't gonna strike a chord, you know, in us. You can ride the coattails of a celebrity all you want, but at the end of the day, there's a couple different departments that need to work in order for us consumers to buy into it. It's so easy for celebrities to just attach their name to something and hope it will sell, will sell, but you can see the difference when it's thought out. I don't know if it's them that's thinking them out or if it's the brand of creative directors that they hired or what mix it is, but you can just tell. And Fenty Beauty, they did that. I hate when I get out a bunch of cream products and then I forget to use them and I set my face. So sorry, cream bronzer, you ain't happening. I think once Fenty Beauty had groundbreaking record sellout. It's made, I think, a lot of either celebrities or their money managers go, hey, you should do that. Show me the money! But it, it misses the mark a lot of the times. And that's where I'm starting to get frustrated because you have all this money in the world and that's what you're gonna do. 
Oh, it just strikes a nerve in me. We're starting to see a lot of brands now. The one of the most disappointing to me of all the celebrity launches was actually Lady Gaga. Maybe it's because I love her. I'm no stan, okay? And no stans come for me. I'm not talking about the person, the celebrity. I'm talking about the choice that was made with their makeup brands. So I love Lady Gaga. Own every single one of her albums, hard copies, okay? I love her. I've seen her in Vegas, beautiful show. She is like the epitome of like high fashion, artistic, ever-changing, making us go like, wow, thinking outside of the box, blowing our mind. I know she has a team directly behind her helping her with all of this, but I mean, I'd like to think a lot of the choices she has a hand in. House Labs got leaked that it was being created, a pro at least a year before they actually launched. You know, people are always like researching trademarks and stuff. Once they finally launched, you know, mm, man, was I disappointed. Just black packaging, just no, it just, it, that was what we were waiting for, you know? And the products that were offered was just like, I can get that for $5 over here at CVS, the drugstore. Like, why, why? You have so much money. And I am sure even more like, if she got partners to back, like there's so much money behind that brand. They chose to partner with Amazon too, which is a controversial company in and of itself, hello. And they did this weird pre-sale that was like months before the launch. And that just didn't, it's just, it's just dumb. <laughs> Like I said, I love Lady Gaga. I cannot wait to watch The House of Gucci or whatever that new movie's called. And I love The Star is Born. Everything she touches is just glorious, except for this makeup line. I know there are some people that, you know, they have a couple favorites of them, but I just, just ask yourself, is this groundbreaking enough to be like hyped up about it? Did I just buy it for House Labs? Because it was Lady Gaga. And I think that obviously, if, when you have, if House Labs came out, like just look at the packaging and the product. Like let's take our bias out of this for a minute. We love the celebrity, whatever, let's take that out. Looking at the packaging, the products, what's on the inside, the performance, would we be wanting to buy it? You know? I never, I didn't. When I, once I saw it, I'm like, I'm out. I'm not gonna buy this. I didn't even wanna review it. I was just, I was just not interested. I was so disappointed because you have things like art pop that came out of this person and every, you know, almost kind of like how Madonna reinvents herself with each thing. And I couldn't really see where House Laboratories fits into this. And that kind of comes into with celebrity brands in general, you almost kind of, want to feel like you're buying a little piece of them, right? Their artistic touch went into it. And for how hyped up the House Labs launch was, I felt like, where's Gaga in this? I couldn't see it. I still don't see it. However, let's give credit where credit is due. I did see the holiday launch that's coming out in a couple weeks. That is really pretty. And while it's not like crazy wild artistic, it does kind of go with the theme that she's giving off this year to kind of promote that Gucci movie. So I like it, I think it's beautiful. It's $40 for that highlighter. So it makes me go, I don't know if it's gonna be that good. Oh my gosh, I just I just realized that I kind of skipped over KKW, which is the uh, Kim Kardashian's beauty line. <laughs> I kind of wanna know the tea behind, excuse me, throw my brush, behind the scenes between Kim and Kylie when Kylie has this super successful cosmetic brand and Kim, was she just like, well, I wanna do one too. I know she was like known for how beautiful her makeup was always done, but a lot of that makeup was makeup by Mario. So I'm glad that he actually came out with his own makeup brand, but I wanna know the behind the scenes. Was there any kind of like tiff, like, you're gonna be in competition with me between Kylie or were they aware that like, no, it's a huge market. There are different concepts. You know, Kylie has her lip kits and it's kind of more towards the little bit younger generation. And then Kim is the little bit more sophisticated generation. I just want to know that. Did you know though, side note that Kardashians had a beauty line where it was like a lot of hair care and stuff that lasted, I don't know, like six months. The, the beauty boutique that I was working for actually carried it for like a hot second and, and it went away so fast. It was not selling, even though their name was attached to it. I'm sure they were like, 
Well, what happened? I thought people liked us. Let's talk some more about some other brands. So Victoria Beckham came out with a beauty brand a couple years ago. I don't really hear much about it. I think I saw like a couple reviews when it first launched. I don't even know where you can purchase it. I know it's super high end and like luxury prices, which have its place, but I just, I don't hear anything. Then you have Millie Bobby Brown who launched the Florence by Mills, I believe it's called. That one is geared again towards the much younger kind of preteen and teen generation. The price point isn't as low as I would have liked to see. And from the reviews that I saw, and I tried looking at all different ages, the products themselves weren't performing that well. And anybody who had anything negative to say, oh my goodness, the Millie Bobby Brown stands were coming at them. So it made people like nervous and probably not even want to talk about it anymore because if they had anything negative to say, they got roasted on a, on a pitchfork or whatever. That's not cool. Like we need to, we need to, as consumers, and I try my best to do this, look at it in the sense, like I was talking about Kylie Cosmetics, like, do you actually like the product or do you just like the person? That's okay if you wanna support them. They financially don't really need it, but that's okay, you do you. I'm not gonna tell you how to spend your money. Uh, we have a couple makeup brands that definitely, definitely went under the radar. And actually, I know at least one that closed. We had Lauren Conrad had a beauty line, probably sold at Kohl's. I don't know exactly where, to be honest. We had Ashley Tisdale, which I barely heard anything about at all. Again, I don't know where you could purchase it, maybe just online. They have actually since closed. That's going back to like, you're having your name attached to it, hoping that it will sell. It doesn't, not because of controversy, just because, I don't know, maybe there's not really a market for them anymore. Ooh, I don't know. Oh, that was way harsh, Ty. Okay, well, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna use this. I haven't talked about this yet. The Kesha Rose, the Kesha Rose makeup line. I'm using air quotes because it, what? It's, it's a collab, right? But it's not, but it is, but it's not. But they've literally never come out with anything since the initial launch. That was weird, you guys. I'm gonna use this eyeshadow palette today because I was like, oh, I haven't used it in a while. That might be fun. <laughs> so yeah, she, that was so hyped up that like Kesha Rose is coming out with beauty line and she's artistic and cool and kind of like not as high level as Lady Gaga hype, but almost there because you know, she's so unique and different and she always had like lots of fun looks going on. I had high hopes and you know what? They didn't disappoint when it was weird. We found out like the week of that it was launching on hip dot. So we're like, well, that's a little strange, but whatever. And then we started figuring out, oh wait, this is basically a collab. Like this is not a whole makeup range, you know? And I got the line. I actually liked most of it, including this eyeshadow palette and the lipsticks, the formulas, everything was great because it's, it's Hip Dots formulas. And mm, we haven't seen anything since. So that to me is not even, it's like they like tried to, and maybe they wanted to see how it would sell and then they would come out with more. Maybe it didn't sell as well as they thought it thought it would. I don't know. They have since collabed with other musicians and artists like My Chemical Romance, which is my favorite. And I have the original collection and then the new one is was on pre-sale. The new one, did I just buy it because it was My Chemical Romance? Guilty as charged, guilty as charged. I like the look of the, the palette, the lip, the lippies or whatever. I don't even know what's coming. I pre-sold it so long ago. That wasn't a necessary purchase for me, but they had to, you were only allowed to pre-sell the entire collection. I would have just bought the eyeshadow palette, but that wasn't a choice. So say la vie, that's not its own makeup brand. That's a collab. That, so that is different, but they called that a collab. This, they didn't call it that. They said this was her line. That doesn't make any sense. So moving on, last year alone, we had so many celebrity launches ranging in all types of beauty, but let's talk about makeup. Of course, that's what we're doing today. We have the Halsey line about face. I like it. I mean, wait, well, let me take it back. I haven't used it yet, but I like the look, the aesthetic. I've heard a lot of good things from it. She does, she's claimed, and we've seen it a lot to do her own makeup looks and they're really avant-garde and cool. So the makeup line itself really makes a lot of sense. And she goes on lives and does videos of her doing different makeup looks. I like that. I like that. It feels very like a good blend. She's not like a beauty YouTuber or anything, but it. she found a way to meet into the middle 
you know, of making it more, making it more, like making it resonate more with us. And the aesthetic, just like I said, it really matches her. I'm not like a huge Halsey fan. I don't really know that much of her music, but she as a person just seems really sweet and cute and you know, um, but yeah, I wasn't drawn to immediately buy it because I wanted to wait and see reviews because I've just been a little disenchanted from all these celebrity makeup lines. We also saw the launch of Rare Beauty by Selena Gomez. A lot of us were confused on that initial launch too because we don't we don't know her for her makeup, but it also it also kind of made sense once it did launch because it was very like natural and you no know, makeup makeup. And I have to say, Rare Beauty surprised me. It is still talked about a year plus later. People are still loving that line and the blushes and stuff. So we'll see, we'll see, only time will tell. You don't know, like if I was an average consumer and I walked into Sephora and I saw Rare Beauty, I wouldn't know it was Selena Gomez's line. And I almost kind of like that because that makes sense from like a business standpoint, right? So we talked about what happens when celebrities make it their name. It's hard to pull out from that. So if Selena Gomez has some controversy, she'll be able to sell off the brand and no one will really remember one day, you know, where Kat Von D couldn't recover by keeping it hers, she had to sell it off. And who knows if the brand can still recover. So we have now REM Beauty by Ariana Grande. If you've seen my TikToks, Instagram, I might, I think, yeah, I even posted the video here and man, the Ariana Grande stands really came for me, okay? Listen, I, I hate the packaging just off of first impressions, just seeing it, not coming for Ariana Grande and her skills as a musician or just her as a person. I, it, I'm completely setting that aside. I'm being as unbiased as I possibly can. And I'm just as a consumer that loves product packaging, that's what I'm looking at when I see these teaser pictures. And boy, do I hate it. I have had people t comment as well. Hello, Claire's makeup. Hello, Claire's clearance makeup. I myself felt like it was the clearance section in Rite Aid back in the mid 2000s when I was shopping in the clearance section in Rite Aid. That's to me what it looked like. There was a time when I was working at the beauty store where we were asking different companies to send us samples and little gift bag things that we can create for a gift with purchases. And I had one of these companies send me like the most random makeup products that obviously were cheap. They, I don't even, I never even heard of them. That was literally the packaging, just blank silver with like a little random lettering on it. It just looks really cheap to me. <laughs> I, again, I'm not coming for Ariana, okay? It's the freaking packaging and I'm, I don't feel it. I haven't felt the product. It might feel really high quality. I might tr look at it one day and feel it and be like, wow, this is actually really good just off of teaser pictures, just off of the product launch page. I think it looks cheap, okay? I did watch a couple reviews on it, including Manny's, and I felt like he was trying to like the eyeshadow palette. He said the mattes were really nice, but those shimmers were just falling flat. And it's not, it's a good mid-range price point. I don't feel like anything ex is too expensive, except like Manny talked about, the lashes were like $16, which they look like e.l.f. lashes, which are a dollar, maybe $3 for the little bit nicer ones of e.l.f. We knew she was coming out with this line for a while now. I don't know about a year, but for a long time, the line itself was very hyped up. And other than her wing liner, I don't know her for any other makeup looks. And you know what about that, okay? And nobody I've heard say this, she's known for her winged liner. I know she has a makeup artist that's doing her makeup, but she's known for that. I expected a good felt tip liner and even Manny and a couple other reviews that I saw, they didn't like it very much. And I saw the packaging and I was instantly mad because I have used packaging like that liner, like that tip, before and it's garbage, okay? It's like the out of touch drugstore brands that make makeup products because they don't know that when you actually go to use it, it's not good. The problem is the lip is like, goes too far where you can't get that flick without dragging it and then skipping and it's just, this is one of my favorites, the ColourPop BFF. Do you see how smooth that transition is? There's no thick like casing right there. That one, it looks too thick to me and I just, of all the products she should have slayed at. And I know this is just the first launch, maybe there's more to come out, but that's what I would be like, oh, what celebrity has a good liquid lip liner? It has to be Ariana, right? Ariane Beauty should have that, but I haven't seen it play out well yet. And that's a missed opportunity.
that's a missed opportunity. Wow, the girl has lashes all of a sudden. So I don't wanna spend too long on the whole Harry Styles pleasing launch because there's no makeup involved at this time. But I wanted to say something because there could be. And I honestly feel like for me personally, that makes a little bit of sense because he's very fashion focused and kind of edgy and stuff. And I think that it would be really cool if he did. I would, I'd be curious to see what he did in the line, but I do think it's gonna come at a high price point because those nail polishes that he just launched, whilst look interesting, unique and different and a little, a little risque with the naming and the shaping of those nail polishes, they are different. It's nice to see something than just a regular nail polish bottle. The colors themselves are very basic and they're $20 a piece. So I think that if he ever comes out with makeup products, they're gonna be really expensive. Oh man, so we'll see with that. So here's the thing, here, here is the thing. So we just covered a ton, a ton of different celebrity makeup brands. I probably am missing some because there's just so many, but that, those are the ones that I could think of and I wanted to talk about. So the question now remains, are these celebrity brands or some of them just money hungry? Is it just a cash grab or are they really genuine? And I think unfortunately us as consumers are left to decide that. Some people will just buy it just because of the name and that's okay. If that's somebody, if you wanna support your artist just because it's them and that's what they produced, that's fine. Just know, just know what you're getting into. But I feel like we can have both, right? We can support somebody, we can like the artist, and they also deliver us what we were hoping for. I think a lot of us are purchasing these celebrity brands or wanting to because it feels like you're taking a part of them home with you and you just it makes you excited or you love their aesthetic and you want to see that translated into the cosmetic line. And then when it's not, that's when it feels kind of money hungry cash grabby, you know? So I I just it makes you feel a certain way, you know, and there's some there's there's been some recent launches that just make me feel like, oh, really? That's, you had all this money behind you and that's what you're choosing to put out, you know? And I also think that, you know, the whole reason why the oversaturation of makeup is happening is because it's the same thing that happened with all the celebrity perfumes. Remember when that was like so big and obviously perfume sales are not now what they used to be. They've definitely declined and makeup sales have gone up. So a lot of celebrities and their teams are saying, hey, beauty is booming. Look at Fenty, look at these cases. AVD line, they have really taken over. Look at all these YouTubers who are making crazy amount of sales who have a fraction of the household name that a celebrity does. Let's capitalize on that. Let's make money on that. And it's not bad to want to make money just like I said, marry the two, like make it a part of you, make it artistic. Like let's not be this fast fashion monster where we're just trying to make the initial sales and we don't care what happens after. Let's make it sustainable. Let's make it exciting. Let's make it unique and outside of the box. Don't just slap your name on it because most of us can tell when that's happening and I don't like it. It makes me feel a certain way and I don't like it. I don't want any part of it. People say in the comments, like on Trend Mood and stuff when I'm reading these launches, it's like, well then don't buy it. Don't worry, I won't. But I am gonna share my opinion on my YouTube channel because I got one and I think that I'm not alone in that and I don't want anybody to ever feel like, well, I, got, I gotta buy it because it's them and I, I wanna support them. And it's like, well, look at your whole scope here. You know, what, what does it check off your list? Look at it that way. Try to take out the bias. I have to try to do this, especially when it comes to collabs. I'm guilty of buying so many collabs, especially from ColourPop, because it's a little bit more affordable. But sometimes I need to remove the bias from myself and look at it. Okay, is this product gonna perform? Is it something that I need in my collection? Do I love the color story? Is that foundation gonna work for me? What does it check off my list? And at the end of the day, is it purely just for collector's purposes? And if so, and I have the budget for it, that's okay too, you know? So just looking at it that way and then, <sighs> it'll help us sort through the BS, you know? So that's all I gotta say for today. Please comment down below if you have any thoughts and opinions on these celebrity makeup brands. Go ahead and subscribe because I know that I got more to say, especially when it comes to celebrity skincare brands and just beauty brands in general. I got a lot of deep dives coming up and behind the scenes kind of makeup commentary. So subscribe if you wanna see those videos, make sure your notification bell is turned on. That way YouTube is more likely to recommend my videos to you. Follow me over on Instagram and TikTok if you like more short 
platform content, really quick fire type of stuff. I'm having lots of fun over there, like I said, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.